So let's do something that's a little bit more complicated than the previous uh, little four plus six thing that we wrote up, right? Let's say you had something. So what you have here is two terms, and what you're trying to do is find a pattern between each one and take that out, find something similar between each of them, and take that, factor that out to the front. That's called the GCF, greatest common factor. So what you would do here is, you have a 24 and a 16. Now I'm gonna break one more of these things down to their prime, prime numbers. Actually, we're not even gonna bother. 24, 16, what's similar between these two numbers, right? If you look at this, eight goes into this. That's the, that's the highest number that goes into both of those terms. You can take out a 12 out of this, but you can't take out a 12 out of this. You can take a 24 out of this, but you can't take a 24 out of that. So the biggest number that you can take out of both these numbers, 24 and 16, is 8. So you can take an 8 out of both of these. Right. So what you can do is, I usually end up writing it like this. That way I can put whatever is similar between them in here, and then we'll figure out what's left over. So from 24 and 16, you can take out an 8. So an 8 comes out. Right? If you want, you can write down what's left over after you take the 8 out. Right? So if you took an 8 out of 24, you have 3 left here. Put your plus sign here. Leave enough room for these guys if you're going to have any of these guys left in there. But let's put this in the middle. Right? 8 out of 16 is going to be 2. Right? So this is basically the principle, right? If you brought the 8 in, multiplied it here, this would go in and multiply this guy and this guy, and you would get back your original 24 and 16, right? You're taking out the GCF. Over here, now you're done with the numbers. Now let's go to the next letter. You have an A here, you have an A here. So you can take out an A from both of them. So an A comes out. You don't need anything here because you only need an A there and you have an A here already. So you've already taken out the greatest common factor from these guys, nothing left over. You have a B squared here and a B cubed here. B squared means there's two Bs. B cubed means there's three Bs. So what you can do is take out two Bs from both of them. Now you couldn't take out a B cubed because this doesn't have three Bs to be taken out. So what you do is you go B squared comes out, right? Now you don't have any more Bs here. You'll, you needed a B squared and you got a B squared here because when this guy goes in and multiplies this guy, you're gonna get eight times three is 24, a B squared, right? Over here, you had a B cubed. You have a B squared here, so all you need is another B, one more B, right? Now, obviously, we left too much space between these guys. So what you would do is just go eight A B squared, three plus two B. And this is this guy factor. You just took out the GCF from this guy, and you ended up with this, okay? It's a Factoring GCF is something that you're gonna use all the time throughout your you know, math experience, if you wanna call it. So it's something that you really need to learn. So when it comes to quadratic equations, let's say you had something like this. If they ask you to factor this, what you're doing is, is again, you're looking to see what's similar between these two terms here to take it out to the front and turn it into two things, two terms multiplied together. Now, what's similar between, you know, 2 and 8 is a 2, right? So you can take out a 2. What's similar between x squared and x? You know, there's an x there and two x's here, so you can take out a maximum of one x, right? So an x comes out, right? Now, what you have left here is, the way you should think about it is, what do you multiply 2x by to give you 2x squared? And that's just an x, right? Because 2x times x gives you 2x squared. What do you multiply 2x by to give you 8x? Well, you multiply it by 4. So that becomes 4. And this is this guy factored. And where this becomes useful is, if they give you, like for example, if you had it like this, all they would be saying is, you know, factor this uh, expression. And this is really an expression, it's not an equation because there is no equal sign in there, right? What they would do is just say factor this. But what they, what they could do and what, you know, the way you work towards functions, where we're going to go is working towards functions, is you would have an f of x here if it was a function. When it comes to solving equations, what they would do is just say, 
add equals to zero here and say solve this equation. And to solve this equation, what we're going to do is use the property of zero where if you, you know, right now we can't solve this equation because x squared and x, you know, you can't combine them, you can't add them if you remember your exponents are radicals. So we need a new technique to be able to solve this and that's called factor GCF, right? And what we're going to do is use the property of zero where it says the only way you can have something, multiple things, you know, things multiplied together to give you zero is if at least one of them is equal to zero. So if they said solve for this, right, they would say solve for this and this would be equal to zero. What we're going to do is break this into, you know, things multiplied together to give you zero. That way you can set each one equal to zero. And that's exactly what we have here. We've got two things multiplied together to give you zero. So what you can do is set each one of these equal to zero. So what you would do is you go, you go 2x is equal to zero, right? Then you go x plus 4 is equal to zero. And then you would just solve for this. For this, you would just divide by 2. So this would be x is equal to zero. And for this, you just move the 4 over, and it would be x is equal to negative 4. And those are your solutions. And as we talked about before, those are your x-intercepts for a parabola. Okay. So we've got 9x squared over 16 plus 3x cubed over 28. And again, if there was no equal sign here, they would just say factor this expression. But what we're going to do is continuously add the equal sign because you know, it's one step more complicated than this. So uh, what we're going to do is just try to solve the equations right away. So we're just going to add zero. <laughs> so what you would do is, I mean, this doesn't change anything, right? You have a fraction compared to where we didn't have fractions. We just had straight up you know, numerator type of problems. We have something like this, right? With fractions, it works the same way. If you're taking out a GCF, whatever's in the denominator stays in the denominator. So what you're gonna do here is take out the GCF for each one of these terms. You got a nine and you have a three. So, so what's the GCF? What's the common, uh, greatest common factor between nine and three? Well, that's just straight up three, right? So let's put our brackets. That's what we're doing here. So you take out a 3 from here, you took out a 3 from here. You have an x squared here, you have an x cubed. So you can take out an x squared. Now what you're going to do is just go into the denominator. You took out whatever you could from the numerators, right? What you're going to do is look at 16, 16 and 28. Now, what's the GCF out of these? 2 goes into 16, you got an 8 left. 2 goes into 28, you got a 14 left. But that's not the complete GCF because you can take out another 2. So the GCF of 16 is going to be 16 and 28 is going to be 4. So you're going to take out a 4 from this and you're going to take out a 4 from this. And that is the GCF from both of those terms. So what you're going to do now is figure out what's left over after you take this out. Now, again, the way I think about it is, I always go back to this and I go, what do I need to put here and what, are, what am I going to multiply this guy by to give me back this, okay? So, we have 3x squared here, we got 9x squared here, what do you multiply 3x squared by to give you 9x squared? That's just straight up 3 because we already got all the x's that we need. So there's going to be 3 going here. With the denominator, what do you multiply 4 by to give you 16? That's just 4. have a plus and what do you multiply 3x squared by to give you 3x cubed well you need another x because this is x squared you need x cubed right and what do you multiply 4 by to give you 28 that's just 7 and that is this guy factor now what we had was this guy equaling 0 right 
unfortunately the zero is not coming up, but there's a zero there, equals to zero. So all you do is you set each one of these terms equal to zero and solve for the x. So what you're going to have here is, you're going to have 3x squared over 4 is equal to zero, right? And over here, you're going to have 3 quarters plus x over 7 is equal to zero. And these two, you know, the solutions for these is going to be the solution for this. Now, I've ran out of room. This one's just going to be straightforward. You cross multiply the 4 up. 4 times 0 is 0. 